I've seen a couple of videos lately on YouTube and elsewhere uh, basically touting vegan diets. Uh, now, you have to separate vegan from vegetarian. A lot of people think that the terms are synonymous when, in fact, they're not. A vegan is a person who lives on literally only fruits, vegetables, nuts, no animal foods of any kind, no eggs, no cheese. You have various subtypes of, of, of vegetarianism, such as lacto-ovo-vegetarianism, which involves uh, the uh, elimination of meat and fish, but the continued consumption of uh, milk and eggs. Uh, lacto ovo uh, vegetarian uh, basically a lot of people don't really consider that a vegetarian because you're eating the animal foods, eggs and milk. However, from a bodybuilding standpoint, it, it, uh, it, there's literally no uh, drawbacks from a bodybuilding, muscle building perspective of consuming a lacto ovo diet. In fact, uh, Bill Pearl, who just recently, uh, at the end of October, he turned 89 years of age. Bill Pro won four Mr. Universe uh, contests. Uh, some videos incorrectly said five, but he won four, including the Mr. America 1953, Mr. Universe 1953, 61, 67, and 71. Uh, those are when, that's when he won the Mr. Universe. But anyway, Bill Pearl in his uh, most of his competitive years was a uh, omnivore. He did eat meat, you know, the, all the different protein foods. Uh, as he got older, though, I think it was when he was 39, uh, he's a Native American, actually, Bill Pearl. Uh, and um, they have a tendency, a lot of Native Americans have a tendency to get gout, which is a, a deposition of uric acid crystals in joints, especially the big toe and other areas. It caused a lot of pain. Uh, Bill Pearl traced it, thought it would, had to do with eating meat. So he became a lacto-ovo vegetarian, and uh, as such... He competed and he won the 1971 uh, NABA Professional Miss Universe title in London. He defeated uh, such great champions as Reg Park and Sergio Oliva, uh, among others. Uh, so, you know, and there's other subtypes. There's fruititarians, which only eat fruit. Uh, you know, I don't want to go into all the various categories of vegetarianism, but the thing that concerns me about some of this, uh, I'm now going to refer mainly to vegan diets. Again, vegan diets involve only fruits, vegetables, nuts, no animal protein foods of any kind, no animal foods of any kind. So what, what, the rest of the video, anything I'm talking about vegetarian, I'm referring to vegan. The thing that disturbs me about vegan uh, videos and the publicity surrounding the diets is that uh, a lot of the vegan advocates, uh, they, they, they just take cherry pick studies. Uh, I, I have not seen, I'm going to make a flat statement right now, I have not yet seen or read any material from any vegan uh, uh, vegan uh, advocate who basically doesn't cherry pick studies, it doesn't include the full picture. They take, they, 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 they use, the evidence they use, uh, which is positive towards uh, uh, vegetarianism or specifically ve uh, vegan type of eating, uh, uh, you know, that's the only thing they talk about, and they don't mention other studies that show favorable effects from consuming animal foods. Uh, two examples of this are the recent uh, documentaries. Uh, one of them a couple of, was a couple of years old. It's called Forks Over Knives. It, it, it uh, featured a bunch of interviews with vegan doctors or vegan advocate physicians and other people, uh, and uh, it was very, very skewed towards uh, being a vegan. Uh, once again, uh, you know, if you just don't know the, uh, let's say, the scientific data on nutrition and you watch a video like that, you come away thinking, wait a minute, maybe there is something to this veganism. In other words, maybe I should be a vegan, uh, you know, uh, uh, or a vegan. Not sure the pronunciation. You know, use both vegan, vegan, but you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, the point is, you know, when you watch these documentaries, you walk away thinking, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Gee, I mean, it prevents heart disease and cardiovascular disease and, and cancer. I mean, I mean, uh, maybe this is the way to go. Of course, there's uh, controversies involved w w in relation to uh, being a vegan uh, and bodybuilding. The controversy there is that uh, animal foods, uh, meat, fish, eggs, that kind of thing, uh, they contain the greatest amount of essential amino acids, which are the elemental forms of protein. And it's essential, as, uh, essential amino acids are required for muscle growth. Uh, and a lot of the vegan foods are lacking essential amino acids. And if they're lacking essential amino acids, that means they're an incomplete protein that does not support muscle growth. 
uh, based on this, a lot of people say, well, you can't uh, become a bodybuilder uh, as a vegan. And if that's not necessarily true, it was harder years ago. Uh, you can always uh, get enough protein as a, as a vegan uh, or vegan, 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 again, you know, what difference does it make? But anyway, the point is you can always get enough protein. It just, it just means that you'd have to eat a lot more food to get the protein because uh, vegan uh, foods, they tend to be not very concentrated in the amino acids. And also, uh, as I said, some of them are, are limiting in, in, in the sense that they don't contain enough of the essential amino acid to constitute a complete protein. So you'd have to eat a wide variety of vegan foods and a lot of vegan foods to build muscle, but you still can do it. However, that's changed in recent years with the advent of vegetable-based protein uh, supplements, such as hemp, uh, soy has always been around, uh, rice, and, and all kinds of basically vegan-based uh, protein supplements. And the scientific studies show that, uh, you know, again, these, uh, these uh, vegan-based protein supplements, they don't have as, me as much essential uh, amino acid content, branched chain amino acid, as the uh, uh, animal proteins such as whey protein isolate. But what the studies show, if you take, for example, uh, let's say we're talking about, uh, just to pick one out of a hat, rice protein. If you take two scoops of rice protein, you will equal the amino acids found in a one scoop of whey protein isolate. And this is great news for vegans who want to be athletes or bodybuilders because they don't have to shovel in tons of vegan foods to get their protein. Now all they got to do is take a, a rice, wheat, hemp, or any of those, uh, uh, you know, those vegetable-based proteins, and they can get their share of amino acids, essential amino acids needed to support muscle growth. You know, so there really is, uh, you know, the bottom line, um, I've talked about soy protein in, in other videos. I'm not going to get into it. There is some controversies with soy protein. Um, there is some recent evidence that in the first couple of months that you take a large, large, and I emphasize large, large amounts of soy protein the first couple of months will inhibit thyroid hormone production. They now know that's true. However, this requires like, it would require like several scoops a day. If you take one scoop, which contains about 25 grams of soy protein isolate, it's not going to cause any problems with, with, uh, with testosterone or estrogen or thyroid. That's all bullshit. And yet, I still see a lot of websites and videos keep warning about how bad soy protein is. Most of it is bullshit because it's, it's, it's based on taking in huge amounts of soy, which very few people do. Small amounts of soy are harmless. It's not the best protein. It's not comparable to animal proteins because soy protein tends to be used more by the internal organs rather than muscles for some strange reason. Uh, but uh, that's enough said about soy protein. That's not the point I wanted to make in this video. The thing that really concerns me about this uh, vegan publicity in the documentaries, a uh, recent one, uh, I just want to mention one other one, which is v engendering a tremendous amount of, uh, of uh, controversy right now. It's called The Game Changers. It was produ produced by James Cameron, who, produ who produced or wrote the first Terminator movie in Titanic. He's the top Hollywood director. He also has a, a, a very you know, well-known director who directed it. Features uh, profiles of several vegan athletes. Uh, Arnold makes a brief appearance. And again, if you watch this movie, you would say that, uh, you know, vegan is the way to go. I mean, they show, it seemed, they even flash a couple of studies making it look like vegan is far superior to uh, consuming animal proteins. One part of the movie, which I really had to belly laugh, I couldn't, it was so laughably stupid. They had a vegan uh, advocate urologist. Uh, he tests three young athletes. Uh, he basically uh, suggested that eating uh, animal protein would uh, prevent them from having or, or uh, inhibit erections, whereas uh, you know uh, eating uh, vegan uh, foods would promote erections. Uh, and the way he illustrated this, anyone who knows any degree of science would just, like I say, they'd burst out laughing. It was so freaking stupid. But my big problem, and this is what I'm leading up to, my big problem with the vegan publicity is that a lot of them always say that, you, you know, the, the notion that there are nutrients missing in, in vegan diets is nonsense. They make statements like you can get all the nutrients you can, uh, that you need for, for health. You can obtain them all by pure vegan eating. No supplements are necessary. And that, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. There's no other way I could say it. 
is bullshit. Bullshit. It's not true. It's a lie. And people who believe that are going to be really hurt. There's a lot of people, including some famous movie stars, that uh, like Angelo Jolie, among others, they went on vegan diets and they said that they never felt as sick as they did in their life. They lost muscle mass. They they just felt terrible. They looked gaunt. They looked. Uh, I believe it wasn't so much the vegan diet. It's the fact that they accepted that nonsensical crap about how you can get all the nutrients you can uh, you know, that you need in a vegan diet. And they, they actually became deficient in nutrients, especially if they stayed on the diets for an extended time. So they looked and felt like crap because they they, they believe that. And, and it really pisses me off. That's why I made this video, because it annoys me that these vegan advocates, you know, they, they lie to people and say you can get all the nutrients you need from a vegan. It's just not true. So I'm going to go over a couple of nutrients that are likely to be in short supply in a vegan diet. Okay, so... Uh, let me, let's like, we're going to talk about seven in particular. The first one, by far, the most likely nutrient to be deficient in a vegan diet is vitamin B12. Uh, there's different forms of B12, but the point being that B12 is found in animal protein foods. I did the research, and I, I found that there's only, uh, I mean, the, the, the vegan advocates, they say that uh, uh, foods, you, you, you can get B12 from... Uh, ingesting unwashed organic produce because of the bacteria it might contain can uh, produce B12. Uh, they said that you can get B12 from mushrooms grown in B12 rich soils. You can get B12 in something called nori, spirulina, chlorella, and nutritional yeast. That's the, uh, So based on that, the vegan advocates say you don't need to take any B12 uh, uh, supplements. Uh, so, but here's the problem. There's no scientific basis for that whatsoever. When I researched it, uh, I found that, that there was only two actual plant sources of bioavailable B12. Here's where the vegan advocates are making the mistake. The foods that I mentioned contain, uh, let's say, an analog of B12. Uh, uh, without getting into too much technical detail, let me put it this way. Uh, it, it, when you consume these foods, the, the form of B12 it, it, it contains is not bioavailable to the body. In other words, it basically passes right through you. So you don't get any B12 benefits from it. And if you depend on these foods for B12, you will eventually get a B12 deficiency, which is very serious. Among other effects of a B12 deficiency are brain shrinkage. Older people that lack B12, and in most cases in older people, it's due to a lack of acid production in the stomach too, because you need acid to activate a, a substance called intrinsic factor, which is needed to absorb uh, orally ingested B12. Anyway, a lot of the older people, after a couple of years, they, they show symptoms that look exactly like Alzheimer's disease, when in fact it's not Alzheimer's disease. Of course, in some cases it is, but in other cases it's due to a, a, a long-standing B12 deficiency. Now, your liver stores about five years' worth of B12, so it takes a couple of years for B12 uh, symptoms uh, to occur. But when they do occur, it's very serious. You have degeneration of the spinal nerves. There's a lot of real problems. Like I say, shrinkage of the brain. Uh, several studies show that while anyone can have low B12 levels, vegetarians and vegans have a higher risk of deficiency. This has been shown in studies. And it's especially true for vegans who don't use any supplements. The daily recommended intake for B12 is 2.5 micrograms for adults, 2.6 micrograms during pregnancy, and 2.8 uh, micrograms per day. Well, that's a very small microgram. Is a is a uh, I believe it's a millionth uh, of a gram. Could be a, a billionth. Of, I don't remember. But anyway, the only scientifically proven way to reach uh, B, uh, these levels uh, is by consuming B12 fortified foods. Uh, because of the popularity of veganism, some foods uh, slated for vegans, they add B12 to it. So that's good. Uh, or the other option, of course, is you have to take a B12 supplement. B12 fortified common uh, foods that are uh, foods commonly fortified with B12 include plant milk, soy products, breakfast cereals, and nutritional yeasts. All of these are acceptable as a vegan. Some plant some plant foods seem to contain, as I said, a form of B12, but it's debatable again whether this form is active in humans. Most studies show that they aren't. A survey of naturally occurring plant-derived food sources with high B12 new contents suggested that something called dried purple laver, also known as nori, N-O-R-I, 
It's the most suitable B12 source presently available for vegetarians. Furthermore, dried purple laver also contains high levels of other nutrients that are lacking in vegetarian diets, including iron and, and omega-3 fatty acids. Unfortunately, the omega-3 is in the form of alpha-linoleic acid, which is only 5 to 10 uh, percent uh, converted into the active omega-3, EPA and DHA. Anyway, dried purple laver is a natural plant product, and it's suitable for most people in various vegetarian groups. B12 from algae, such as spirulina, spirulina is frequently touted by the vegan advocates as being a good source of bioavailable B12. However, spirulina, contrary to popular belief, spirulina does not contain a form of B12 that's usable by the body. Okay, so again, if you're a vegan, you either follow what I just said as far as consuming B12 fortified foods, or you can take a B12 supplement. They do now make uh, B12 supplements that are specially made for vegans and not based on anal any animal products. Uh, the best form of B12, as far as absorption, is, it's called methyl uh, cobalamin. Uh, it gets into your brain a lot better than the more common uh, form of B12 called cyanocobalamin. So, you know, I would go with methyl cobalamin if you're going to use a uh, B12 supplement. Another nutrient that's frequently lacking not only in vegan diets, but in just about anybody's diet, is vitamin B, vitamin D. Very few foods, not very, the problem is very few foods naturally contain D in any sufficient quantity. As I said in a past video, some knucklehead uh, science blog tried to say that you can get all the B, uh, D, all the vitamin D you need from eating eggs. But what he didn't tell you was you'd have to eat about five dozen eggs a day. Nobody's going to do that in their right mind. So, you know, you can find uh, irradiated mushrooms is one food that does contain a good amount of B12. I mean, not B12, I'm sorry, vitamin D. Now, I have never met anyone who eats irradiated mushrooms. Maybe you have. I don't think it's a common food. But anyway, uh, vitamin D, again, is something you can, you know, you know, simple way to get D, you go out in the sun. You know, the sun has to be in the right part of the sky, though, because you have to have a certain a wavelength, a UV wavelength, to turn the cholesterol in your skin into vitamin D. And if the sun is not in the right place in the sky, as it isn't in the colder months in the northeast and other parts of the world, you could stay in the sun for 10 hours and you're not going to get any vitamin D production. Same goes for older people. They make less vitamin D in their skin. Dark-skinned people don't make as much vitamin D in the skin. Fat people, or, or I should say obese people, to be polit politically correct, uh, they, they, they can make the vitamin D in the skin, but instead of being used by the body and converted into active form, well, most of it gets sequestered in the body fat, so they also can you know don't get much benefit from going in the sun. But if you do, all you, get, all you need is 15 to 20 minutes. Your body will make anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 units of vitamin D. So it's a free vitamin, the only vitamin that's completely free, again, uh, under certain conditions. Otherwise, take a, a vitamin D supplement. Uh, I take one that's uh, 2,400 units of D in each pill. The thing is so small, it's a tiny little gel uh, that if I drop it on the floor, I can't find it. <laughs> I mean, a roll some, it's so small, a baby, a, a newborn infant could swallow this pill. There's no excuse, because I know a lot of people say, I don't like to take pills, I can't swallow them, they're too big. You know, but anyway, this thing is tiny, like I say, there's no excuse. And always when you take vitamin D, Take it with a meal containing fat because it's a fat-soluble vitamin. You get at least 67% greater absorption of D. If you take it, you need a lot of fat, like a pat of butter, a tablespoon or two of oil will be enough to absorb the vitamin D. Another common uh, nutrient lacking in vegetarian vegan diets, omega-3 fatty acids. Now, here's another misconception fostered by a lot of the vegan advocates. They'll say, oh, you know, if you check the uh, charts, uh, you'll find that a lot of the uh, vitamins... Uh, I mean, a lot of the foods, the vegan foods, they're very rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah, I know, but you know what they're talking about? They're talking about alpha-linoleic acid. That's considered an essential omega-3 fatty acid, but the truth of the matter is, as anyone who's studied biochemistry and nutrition knows, alpha-linoleic acid is a precursor for the active form of omega-3, which there's two of them, EPA and DHEA, and the body can only convert, uh, I think it's... Uh, they can convert 10% of ALA into EPA. And for DHA, I believe it's as low as 1% to 3%. So alpha-linoleic acid is not a good source of omega-3, contrary to what the vegan advocates say. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go into what omega-3 is useful for, but it's involved in, in well, briefly, it's anti-inflammatory. 
It's great for treating depression. It has an effect on preventing breast cancer, and it can actually be used to treat attention deficit disorder. And as I said, the conversion of ALA to EPA may be as low as 5 to 10 percent, while the conversion to DHA is something like 2 to 5 percent. Research consistently shows that vegetarians and vegans have up to 50 percent lower blood and tissue concentrates, concentrations of EPA and DHA compared to omnivores. Again, that's a fact that you'll never hear in any video, I mean, a vegan documentary or, uh, or video. Uh, okay, so how do you get, uh, how do you get uh, the omega-3? Very simple. If you don't want to eat fish, okay, you want to be a vegan, you don't want a uh, vegan, you don't want to eat fish, vegan, I think it is, vegan. If you don't want to eat fish, fine, take a fish oil supplement. Oh, wait, hold, hold on, I just realized, fish oil supplement from fish. You can have a fish oil supplement if you're a vegan. Good news. They, they make uh, a EPA and DHA supplements from algae. They are now available. They're, they're, they're actually made for vegans. You can get your omega-3 from an algae-based omega-3 supplement. It's not animal. You can get it. So I strongly suggest vegans, you take this supplement. You cannot depend on vegan foods for, for preformed omega-3. You're going to be in trouble without it. You will have a deficiency for sure. You're going to get depressed. It's not good. Not good. Another, another common uh, nutrient lacking in vegan diets, iodine. Iodine basically has one main purpose. It's one-third of thyroid hormone. The other two-thirds are the amino acid tyrosine. You have to have iodine to produce thyroid hormone. And I don't have to tell you how important thyroid hormone is. It controls the resting met met metabolic rate. But vegans are considered at risk of iodine deficiency. And studies report that vegans have up to 50% lower blood iodine levels compared to, uh, the, uh, compared to other vegetarian, like lacto-ovo. They don't have a, they don't, they, you know, they eat foods that have a little bit of iodine in it. So they usually are not lacking. Only vegans have a problem with iodine. Now, okay, what do you do about that? Simple. You take an eye, you take a, uh, they have seaweed supplements, or you can take kelp. Kelp has is loaded with iodine. Now, I, I take a, uh, I take a supplement that's made from a type of seaweed called dulse. I take one capsule a day. It has 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1,000 micrograms of, uh, of iodine, which is a little considerably more than the, I believe the recommended daily allowance is only 150 micrograms. Why do I take more? Because I, I, I have, uh, every day I have cruciferous vegetables because of the health benefits. I'm talking about broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, uh, what is it, kale, all those things. Uh, and unfortunately, those things have an element in it which tends to uh, kind of bind to iodine, and it prevents it from being up, up, taken up by the uh, thyroid gland. I don't think, I, I, honestly, I don't think I really eat enough of these vegetables to cause a problem with iodine, but just to be safe, I take this one little tiny capsule of iodine once a day in the morning just to play it safe. It only costs, it's about four bucks a bottle. It, you know, it's not going to hurt me anyway, so I take that. So that's what I suggest vegan, uh, vegans do. Get, get yourself a little iodine supplement. You, you don't need more. You don't have to take 1,000 micrograms. You can take, you know, 150, 250, up to 500. But at least you, you know for sure that you'll be covered. You're, you're covering your bases as far as iodine goes. Another frequent uh, uh, nutrient, another nutrient frequently lacking in vegan diets is iron. Uh, the best forms of iron are, again, found in animal foods. It's a form called heme iron. Heme iron is highly absorbable. Iron does exist in vegetable food and vegetables, and there's no doubt about it. However, the form is called non-heme iron. Now, non-heme iron is not only less absorbable than heme iron, but there's other elements naturally existing in vegetables and, and vegan foods. Uh, uh, they call anti-nutrients. And examples are, let's say, phytic acid, which is found in wheat, also known as uh, uh, IP6. Uh, they ha and then you have uh, oxalic acid found in vegetables. These things tend to bind to the, to the non-heme iron found in the vegetables and you get very little absorption. They literally lock on to, these, uh, to the iron and just pull it right out of the body. So again, uh, it's, it's really important. Uh, of course, you know that iron is needed to make new DNA, which is needed for cell replication, and also red blood cells. Uh, hemoglobin is the iron-containing pigment that carries oxygen in the blood. So if you don't get enough iron, you get a, a, type, a type of anemia, iron deficiency anemia which is more common in women because of their menstrual cycle uh, functions. But uh, when you, one sign of anemia is, is extreme fatigue. 
You're going to feel tired all the time. You have trouble concentrating. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, I would suggest that uh, vegans, uh, you might want to look to uh, or consider taking a heme iron supplement. The best forms are what they call ferrous, F-E-R-R-O-U-S. The ferrous, uh, ferrous uh, forms of iron are le more absorbable and they have less chance of causing the, the main side effect with iron supplements, which is constipation. So, again, you don't need a lot of iron. Uh, I think, what, 10 milligrams a day is plenty. That, that's all you need. And, by the way, a little trick for you vegans. Uh, if, if you take a, uh, if you eat your, uh, your vegetable foods that contain non-heme iron, if you take vitamin C at the same time, I'm talking extra vitamin C, like a vitamin C supplement, let's say you take, uh, whatever, 500 milligrams of C with the vegetable food, the vitamin C will convert the non-heme iron into heme iron. So now you're getting the same type of iron that's found in animal foods. But so that's just a little trick. The next uh, nutrient that's often lacking in vegan diets, and by the way, this kind of information You'll never find in the vegan de documentaries. You'll never find it on any vegan YouTube. That's why I made this video because I'm I'm, I'm giving you the other side of the picture that these people are never going to tell you. So anyway, that's that, I just want to throw that in. Next nutrient that's that's commonly lacking in vegan diets is calcium. Again, the reason calcium is lacking is, is due to the exclusion of dairy products, uh, dairy like milk, eggs. I'm sorry, yeah, milk, egg, milk and eggs or cheese. Basically, milk and cheese. Are your main sources of uh, of uh, natural calcium? Of course, these are animal foods, and they're deleted from vegan diets. Uh, now, there is again this calcium in vegetables. There is not as much as the dairy foods, but the thing is, again, you have that problem of the anti nutrients, oxalic acid, phytic acid. They will also lock on to calcium and pull them out of the body. You know, and so again, uh, calcium is particularly important to women because women are more prone to uh, the bone thinning disease, osteoporosis which starts at age 30 but doesn't really show up in uh, with symptoms until you hit about 50 when you get spontaneous fractures. Fractures, you can fall down the stairs, you get this fractures of the verte uh, vertebrae in your neck where you get this, you have to walk all bent over and stuff like that. And just as a side note, men who are low in testosterone are also prone to osteoporosis uh, for another reason, which I'm not going to go into. But anyway, calcium is important for that. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the recommended daily allowance for calcium is 1,000 milligrams a day for most adults. For, for people over 50, it's 1,200 because they're at greater risk of, uh, of bone thinning diseases like osteoporosis. Plant sources of calcium do include bok choy, kale, mustard greens, turnip greens, watercress, broccoli, chickpeas, uh, calcium set tofu, and fortified plant milks or, ju or juices. But again, you have that problem of... Uh, of those anti-nutrients, which also exist in a lot of those foods. Uh, I think calcium probably is not quite as much of a problem as the other nutrients I mentioned because so many veg vegan foods do contain at least some calcium. Uh, however, you know, I think women and, and people that are involved in sports to prevent sports fractures and stuff like that, they should probably consider, if you're a vegan, you should consider a calcium supplement. The one I strongly recommend would be calcium citrate because it's a highly bioavailable form. And unlike other forms of calcium, which require that you take it with a meal, calcium citrate can be taken with a glass of water. You can take it at any time. However, one thing to be concerned about is if you purchase a calcium citrate supplement, make sure that the product lists the elemental form of, of in other words, how much cal actual calcium is in the supplement. Because, uh, you know, I think calcium citrate is only something like 12% actual calcium. The rest of it's citrate. So, you know, you have to be careful of that. You know, otherwise you might not, you still not, might be, not be getting enough calcium. Another another new, uh, mineral that's lacking, uh, that could be lacking in vegan diets is zinc. Zinc is crucial for metabolism, immune function, repair of body cells needed for the production of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, testosterone and insulin. And it's also involved in growth hormone release. You could say it's an anabolic mineral. Again, it's uh, very few plant foods contain sufficient amounts of zinc. It is found in, in uh, animal foods like meat. It's uh, pretty rich in animal foods. It tends to go with animal protein, zinc. But, you know, again, the uh, here we go again. The zinc absorption from plant foods is limited because of the phytate, the anti-nutrient phytate. You know, these vegetables are high in phytate. They lock onto the zinc. Zinc's not absorbed. So even if a, a vegetable contains zinc, there might be a problem. Uh, I would say vegetarians are encouraged to aim, because of this, uh, this phytic, phytic acid effect, 
Uh, I, I think vegetarians should, should aim to consume about 1.5 times the uh, recommended daily allowance uh, of uh, zinc uh, for men. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, the recommended daily allowance for zinc is 11 milligrams. So you probably want to, uh, if you're a vegetarian male, or vegan male, I should say, you probably want to aim for about 15 milligrams of zinc a day would be enough. And if you can't get that from the, uh, the, the, the vegan foods, uh, then again, uh, you know, take a, a, a zinc supplement. Best form is zinc complex, complex with the uh, amino acid methionine. It's called zinc methionate. That's the most highly absorbable form of zinc. You don't need a lot. You only need about 15 milligrams a day. In fact, too much zinc has a reverse effect. If you start to take in over 50 milligrams a day, you could actually start to depress the immune system. So you don't want to go crazy on zinc. So there's one other uh, one of the uh, nutrient I mentioned. It's not an essential. Uh, it's not an essential nutrient, but choline. Uh, choline also tends to be lacking in uh, in, in vegan diets. Uh, uh, choline is uh, needed for the production of acetylcholine, which is the uh, important neurotransmitter for memory and intelligence of the brain. Also, acetylcholine is the uh, neurotransmitter at the mild neurojunction. It's needed to relay uh, uh, the, the signal from the brain to the muscles, which causes the muscles to contract. Uh, you don't, again, you don't need a, the, the requirement for choline. It's 500 milligrams a day. It can easily be met. I would suggest that you take the more absorbable uh, forms of choline. You could take lecithin, which is phosphatidylcholine, which is a very absorbable form of choline. Or the other forms I would recommend are either uh, alpha GPC, it's called, or citrocholine. Citrocholine, it's called. Those are the most absorbable forms of choline. Uh, uh, of all the nutrients I've discussed, however, uh, choline is probably the, the one the, the, the least worry about because your your body can make uh, Choline from the amino acid uh, methionine, uh, <laughs> which I hate to say, the most limiting factor of all amino acids, the most limiting amino acid in vegan diets just coincidentally happens to be methionine. In other words, uh, it's one of the reasons why they think uh, that, that vegan diets are, are especially health, healthy because if you restrict methionine in rats, they live up to 30% longer. It has to do with another amino acid byproduct called homocysteine, which I'm not going to talk about here. I talked about it in a recent article in my Applied Metabolic Newsletter. But that's about it. Again, my purpose in, uh, in doing this video was to try and relay the information that you don't get in the vegan, uh, vegan advocate videos or the documentaries. They never tell you about this. They lead you to believe that you can get all the nutrients you need just by eating pure vegan foods, which is not really true, as you see, as you, as you can see by what I said in this video. Even again, even if the vegan foods contain the nutrients, they, they contain anti-nutrients which interfere, which interfere with the uptake of these nutrients. So that requires some sort of, out of supplement. If you want to be healthy on a vegan diet, you have to get all the nutrients that are required by the body. It's that simple. So that's about it. I am going to have a very, very complete in-depth article on 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 veg, on uh, vegetarianism, with a particular emphasis on how vegan bodybuilders and fitness uh, 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 devotees can actually build muscle I'm gonna tell I'm gonna list a couple of tricks that aren't commonly you don't even even the vegan advocates don't talk about this stuff a couple of tricks that'll allow you to actually build as much muscle on a ve on a vegan diet as you could by eating a omnivore a meat based diet it's possible and I'm going to tell you how in this article. It's only going to be in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, nowhere else. In my Applied Metabolics newsletter, you'll also find the latest evidence-based information on nutrition, supplements that work and don't work, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research you can use today. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, mm, I'm, I'm blank right now, but I, I cover every women's uh, women's health and fitness. I cover a wide range of topics. There are some uh, digital newsletters that, that cover nutrition fairly well. Others cover exercise science fairly well. But as far as I know, no one covers as many topics as I do in applied metabolics. It's uh, averaging 40 to 50 pages every month. It's like receiving an uh, e-book every month. It comes out every month on the first of, uh, of each month. If you subscribe, I'll send you an uh, invitation to join my private 
uh, Applied Metabolics Facebook page where every day I post new information on exercise science, nutrition, uh, general health and medicine, every day, brand new information out of the medical journals, every day. It's in the Private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. You have to be a subscriber, though, to access that. Uh, I do have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website. Uh, that's only str strictly limited to current subscribers of Applied Metabolics. If you have any comments on any of the articles that I've written in Applied Metabolics, or if you want to ask me a short questions, you're welcome to, uh, to uh, send it to me through that uh, email portal. However, I don't answer unsolicited questions from non-subscribers. Uh, you know, for that, you're going to have to do a consult with me, which I have a charge for. Uh, I'm not uh, on this earth to, I'm not the, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, Nutrition Answer Man, you know, who's going to answer uh, unlimited amounts of questions for everybody for nothing. I mean, you go to a doctor and, and, and sit in his office and ask him a bunch of questions and see if you walk out without paying something. You know, I do answer a lot of questions for free. I do a lot of what the, the lawyers call pro bono work. As you know, I do give out a lot of information for free. For example, you're welcome to leave comments under these videos. You can ask questions. Uh, the odds of me answering the questions are, are about the same as winning the uh, Powerball lottery, to, be, to tell you the truth. I, I, uh, I'm answering them less and less these days because I just don't have the time to answer unsolicited questions. But I always answer questions from my, uh, my, from my registered subscribers to Applied Metabolics. They always come first because I appreciate the support of my work. So that's about it. Wow, this is a long video. <laughs> this is, I thought this was going to be one of the shortest videos. I, didn't, I, I can't believe it. I guess there was a lot to cover. Anyway, I hope this sets you straight, though, about... Uh, and I, I just want to say one other thing, just in case you get the wrong impression. I'm not against v vegan diets at all. As a matter of fact, I'm on a semi-vegan diet myself. I, 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 uh, I, I About a year and a half, a little over a year, almost a year and three quarters ago, I cut out red meat out of my diet. I eat a little bit of chicken now. I eat eggs. I'm not a vegan, but uh, you know I'm about as close to a vegan as I've ever been in my life. So I'm certainly not against vegan diets. I do feel that if they're if they're followed correctly, including making ensuring they eat eat all these essential nutrients and you get enough protein, there's nothing wrong with them. They're very healthy. I think they're great. You know I'm, I'm not against them. What I'm against is the is the fear mongering. And the false statements and misleading statements made by vegan advocates to promote their cause, I don't like that. Just tell the truth. Tell it like it is. There's a lot of benefits of vegan diets that you can focus on, which they do, but they never list the other side of the page or the other, which I try, which I did in this video, which other people do. And that's the plain fact of the matter. So that's about it. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have. Bruno is not a vegan. Uh, I don't think ve uh, vegan is not a good idea for dogs. Uh, uh, dogs tend to be more carnivores. I don't. Th I don't think uh, giving a dog a vegan diet is a good idea because uh, again, they need certain nutrients that are not available only in vegetables. But vegetables are great if your dog will eat vegetables. That's fantastic. My dog hates vegetables. Hates it. Would not touch any vegetable in any form. Kind of like the way I was until a couple of years ago. But anyway, so go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having the endurance to get through this video. Take care.